In 2015, a single slice of toast isn't just for breakfast. Hearty bread slathered with a schmear and layered with toppings is an open-faced sandwich we can't wait to try and a real palate shocker. You can shock the standby lunchtime sandwich if you know what to grab from your spice cabinet. It's just one way food and lifestyle expert Tara Bench is amping up the flavor this year. So what are most cooks missing when it comes to the spice cabinet? Well, a lot. I mean, our spice cabinet probably looks just like this, full of spices. Right. You maybe bought them for one recipe or the other, and it's just full. You never use them, and then maybe they go old. Do you know how long to keep spices? That sort of thing. How long do you keep spices? So that's, that's the thing. The leafy green ones, uh -huh. the herbs, you can keep those up to a year, even almost two years, if you keep them in a dark, cool place okay. with the lid tightly on. Okay. So you don't want them loose in a baggie or anything. You want them in a plastic or glass jar. Oh, wow. And then spices like cinnamon or whole spices, um, cloves, things like that, three years. Okay. You can keep them. I said, oh, wow, because I don't want you to look at my spice cabinet. It's oh, I probably know. well out of date. I know. And the thing is, is you can label the bottom of the jars to tell you when you bought them, how long they've been in there. Um, another hint is those leafy greens like oregano and marjoram and tarragon. Uh -huh. Rub them in the palm of your hand before you add them to your dish. Why? It releases the oils, and so it creates the flavor burst. You're kidding. No, because they're sitting there and the oils are all encapsulated and so if you just rub them. A little it, massage exactly. in your hand, sprinkle them in, the flavor burst is going to yeah, be Yeah, exactly. And when we talk about expiration dates, is that a food safety thing or more so a, a flavor thing? Flavor. Yeah. Flavor. And, and one thing, don't keep them near your stove or your oven. Everybody's spice cabinet is usually kind of located there. Minus. Yeah, you want to keep it in the pantry or another drawer or cupboard away from the heat because it's heat and light that will destroy those oils and flavors and compounds. I have already learned so much. I love Mr. it. Well, Bench. this is what we're talking about. We want to educate people on spices, and I keep empty spice jars, run them through the dishwasher, wash them with a bottle mm -hmm. washer, and then I can buy my spices in bulk and fill them up and then just do little labels. Um, there's all sorts of spice containers now if you want to dry your own herbs and spices uh -huh. and keep them in your cupboard. And the other thing I love is individual packets of spices. This keeps them fresh because you're not opening and closing that jar all of the time. Got it. And you're just using a little amount. So different brands, different uh, ways of storing spices. Okay, now what could we be using spices on that we might not be aware? Okay, so this is the fun part, cumin. Cumin is healthy, it's an antioxidant, you can use it in rubs. Cinnamon, same thing, um, you use it in baked goods all the time. Uh -huh. But I used it on a rub for chicken. So Cinnamon then on chicken? It's got a little sweet to it, but without the sugar. So kids love it, family, dinner is on the table. Um, curry powder, you might just use it for Indian food or right, a little, you right. know, stuff like that. Toss it on mixed nuts, put it in your chicken soup that you make, just a little bit adds a burst of flavor. So you can use these spices for other unique things. So people don't need to be scared to experiment with different Not spices at all. and throw Oregano, a little bit in here yeah. and there. Oregano, you use an Italian tomato sauce, right? Throw it on potato chips. Here, try one of these potato chips. Oh boy. I threw the potato chips on a baking sheet in the oven, warmed them up, and tossed it with oregano. These are really good. Totally cool snack, it right? It tastes gourmet. Yeah. This is a grocery store potato chip? Plain, salty potato chip. Mm. Um, vanilla pudding with a bay leaf in it. Would you ever think? No. It adds the most amazing spice, just this overtone of flavor to box vanilla pudding, regular vanilla pudding. All right, pudding. you've already enlightened so fun. me. You have a go-to rub that you really like for a lot of different meats, right? Yes, so you think of rubs with barbecue, right? Mm -hmm. You can use this rub all year long. You don't have to use a barbecue for rubs. It could be any sort of barbecue spice rub, but bake the meat in the oven, roast it. Okay. So what I've done is I've made um, a rub with kosher salt. Uh -huh. It's coarse, it's a little more mild flavor, and it's a great uh, vehicle for making rubs. Okay. And then oregano and cumin and black pepper and lemon zest, oh, fresh yum. lemon zest. So salt is a preservative. Can't even get that out. A preservative, and so it keeps that lemon zest fresh and nice. Stick your rub in a container that you've emptied out, uh -huh. and you can keep it all winter long. And when in you your say pantry. rub, we are rubbing this on the meat. You're rubbing. Okay. So instead of sprinkling, yeah. you want to get that salt and the spices in the meat, and then put it on your roasting pan and done. That's I'm what I did with the chicken. I'm gonna try this little combination. What can you do with spices and popcorn? Okay, so this is a fun snack idea. There are so many options, and I've made really fun, creative flavors. Feel free to try them. This um, is a chocolate malt. No way. So it's cocoa powder and malt powder and sugar, and you toss it on the popcorn is right this after you pop Is microwave popcorn? It. There's microwave or homemade. 
It oh. doesn't even matter. What's this? That one is barbecue. You can oh make your own barbecue sprinkling rub, and that's what we're gonna do here. How fun would this be for a Super Bowl to have a bunch yeah. of different popcorn different flavors popcorns. out? Yeah. I wanna tell you about these fun ones. That's apple cinnamon. Okay. You use apple chips and grind them up with cinnamon and sugar and toss it on your popcorn. Oh, that's totally really good. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then butterscotch candies. Grind them up in a coffee grinder or a mini food processor, and you have butterscotch. I think this is my favorite. It's I mean, they're all great. amazing. Bacon and herb with Parmesan cheese, and then this is a sweet chili one with um, cayenne pepper oh, and wow. red pepper. So they're really fun. I want you to try this. Microwave or regular popcorn with uh -huh. a little bit. The microwave popcorn has the oil already on it. Okay. So when you toss it hot, it's great. But if you're making homemade, put a little drizzle of butter on. So do you, I was gonna ask, do you want the butter flavored popcorn or just the plain? Butter flavored. Butter flavored yeah, works, Yeah, it, okay. it enhances all of these. So if you'll stir this up, this yeah. is the barbecue. And you can see, I just used a tablespoon on a couple of cups of popcorn and you have your party snack. So you put it on when it's still warm and those oils are a little bit absorbent. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yum. Party snack, all easy. Right. You say toast is a food trend for 2015 that we're all gonna be crazy about. Toast, open face sandwiches, yeah. if you wanna call them that. But toasts, I love it. You can top any sort of bread with any sort of topping and I have some really fun flavors and ideas. Okay. Um, so one that I love is this spinach and cheese and I use Fontina cheese, it melts really well. It looks amazing. So the trick with that is frozen spinach and then you take it in your hand or gloved hands, whatever you want and uh -huh. squeeze all of the water out of it. Okay. So then if you'll stir this cheese into it. Yeah. It's dry, you don't have all of the liquid. Right and use your hand or a spoon, and we put that on a sliced baguette. How easy is that? And melt it under the broiler. This is so good next to homemade soup or even canned soup for a weeknight Perfect. dinner. Perfect, look at you. Put it in the broiler. I wanna talk about all the fun breads you can use. Okay. Baguettes, ciabatta, French bread, sourdough, and whole grain nut bread all work with the flavor combination. And like what sort of flavors are you reaching for really quick? So with my avocado toasts, uh -huh. I, ta I mash the avocado with a little lemon and sugar and salt and put some red onions and tomatoes. I love that on a whole grain. It's a little heartier. My mouth is watering. If you have kids at home and you want to make these little cheese soldiers, I call them soldiers because they're standing up, Cute. right? Um, a little manchego cheese, rosemary and black pepper. Okay, and this one down Melted in the this? Melted so let's make that one. It's ricotta cheese, okay. which is amazing. Spread that on your toast, uh -huh. really easy. And then top that with a tomato chutney, Ugh. which has a little of our spice, cinnamon, right. and ginger in the tomato Tara. and onion. This all looks incredible. And then the best Thank part. You so much. Best part is what? Drizzle of honey. You're you kidding. would never guess it's amazing. Sweet, sweet and savory. Roasted vegetables, sweet potato spread with cucumbers. You've okay, got it. so easy to see why she is our favorite. Thank you so much. Spice is part of our palate shocker series. This week, we're hoping to wake up your palate, have a little more fun in the kitchen, and one place to go if you want a resource for that is your website. Tell us where we find Tara you. Teaspoon.com. And on Instagram, Tara Teaspoon. Both will lead you to recipes for weeknights or entertaining. Tara Teaspoon will be your new favorite, so be sure to bookmark it online and check out Instagram too. Thank you. Good Thank to you. have you. Happy New Year. We'll be right back.